I am getting out of this booty busting shithole today. Six months of hell, man, I fucking hate this place. You know, I've been, I've been sitting here for over two hours just waiting. The guards just leave you here and don't tell you shit. <laughs> You can't release me unless an adult comes to get me, so my aunt is coming, I think, you know. All I need is for her to get me out. All I need is for her to get me out. I don't need anybody after that. I can take care of myself after that. <laughs> when I go back to, when I get out of places like this and go back to school just to hang out or something, you know, a lot of kids look at me like I'm cool. But um, a lot look at me like I'm some kind of leper or something. It's hard in here. I mean, like, really. It's all cement and iron. <laughs> I have loud echoes of, of doors opening and closing in my dreams every night. You know, I had to act, I had to act badass, but sometimes I couldn't. Things just, uh, things just got to me. Cholo's nicknamed me Sad Boy because I cried a lot. <laughs> Didn't stop the motherfuckers from jumping me. We were on the way to the mess hall, and, um, this punk kept giving me a flat tire, and every time I'd stop to fix it, I got yelled at by the guard. So after about the third time, I turned around and shoved him. Got jumped by him and a bunch of his friends. Um, some black dudes helped out, so that was cool. So, so I guess I'd side with the brothers in a gang fight, but I got sent to lock up for four fucking days. You know, a small fucking cell with, with, no windows or anything. It's sort of the, sort of the cholo, but hell, man, I didn't start it. I might cry once in a while, but but I'll punch your ass too, shit. I think if I miss... I think if I'll miss anything about this dump, it'll be uh, having the Mighty Mouse cartoons on in the day room while we got ready to go to breakfast. You know, that was funny. Watching all these, uh, these hardcore dudes get involved with his adventures. <laughs> I also like Saturday mornings when we uh, <clears throat> when we had to clean and all the black guys would be be dancing with their brooms and mops. Didn't I blow your mind this time? Didn't I? <laughs> their hair would be all wet from us just taking showers, and they'd 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 have these big afros and they'd they shake their hair and send it flying down the hallway, all the water and shit, and, and people would yell and, and shove if they got wet. The Mexicans got moody when the soul music played too long. Where is she? You know, I don't think they'll release anyone past 5 o'clock. My, my dad won't come to get me. He didn't see me while I was in here. He, uh, when I got busted this last time, I was, sort of, I was sort of living with my aunt. You know, she's my mom's sister. I, uh, <laughs> I was running away and taking a buttload of drugs, and I OD'd. I, uh, I was in class and I took about like five reds. Those are downers, and I, uh, I fell asleep in one of my classes. And um, they called my aunt to get me, but she wasn't around, so I called my dad, and he came to get me. I vaguely remember sitting in his uh, Chevy Caprice, wondering when he was gonna smack me, but I don't think he did. You know, I fell asleep on the way home. <laughs> when we got home, he. He dragged me to the front yard. He shoved my face into the dirt. Oh, thanks, Dad. I think I ate a worm. <laughs> Shut up, smartass. What the hell's that on your arm? He, uh, he noticed a, a peace tattoo. You know, it's two fingers showing the peace sign. I got it because I, I really am a peace dude. I mean, I like soul music. I just, I love rock most, but uh, anyway. This kid named Boyd did it. We got real drunk and crawled under his house and, and put it on with a needle and some thread and ink, see? What? Man, I don't, I don't see anything. This! Oh! Oh, fuck. That's my peace tattoo. You know, Boyd gave it to me. Oh, now you're getting tattoos, you son of a bitch! Punched me across the face and I went down. You know, last thing I remember was... It was him all furball going into the house and then... Uh, next thing I remember after that, woke up in the back of a police car. My head hurt like a mofo. The cop said my dad called him to take me in. 
I had to go to court for being incorrigible. I didn't even know what that meant, but I do now. It means fucking up a lot. I didn't think I was a fuck up so much. I was just trying to live. My dad could have stopped him from putting me in here by speaking up in court, but he didn't say anything. He just stood there in his work overalls. And, and so the judge made me a ward of the court, whatever the fuck that is. And I do know one thing, though. It meant I wasn't going home. My dad didn't even look at me when they took me away. Half of what I say is meaningless But I say it just to reach you, Julia You know, John Lennon wrote the song Julia about his mother. <laughs> Such a good song. <laughs> I tried to write one about my mom, but it's hard to find stuff that rhymes with Eva. Eva, I believe her, or don't leave a Eva. You know, everything sounded Italian. <laughs> John had a hard time growing up. I did too. I, um, I started running away when I was 10. Well, I guess you could, I guess you could call it running away. I tried to anyway. I left. I had never been to the barber before. I didn't know what to do with my hands, so I, I squeezed the armrests like they were uh, like they were rocks with love sauce in the middle. I, then whenever the barber would swing around to the side, man, I, I quickly put him on my lap. I didn't want to brush up against the barber's wiener or nothing. I, my mom usually used the, the, the clippers with the butch cut attachment, the, the lawnmower on my head. You know, I, I liked when she cut it. I hated the idea of some stranger staring at the back of my head. I, I, I didn't even know it was back there. I thought I had like, like dirt and spider webs and shit. And as soon as he started cutting, he saw my bumps. He kept, he kept like dragging his finger over him like he was playing piano or something. It was like a, it's like a bad song in my head. I wanted him to, to stop, but I didn't say anything. Are you all right, son? Maybe take it off a, a little more all the way around. He was staring at me in the mirror like, he was looking at me like he was worried. You know, everyone looks at me like they're worried. <laughs> no one had ever called me son before. Eh? No, this is okay. You know, my mother was gone. I wanted so badly to let my hair grow longer. You know, I saw a couple of boys that were going into the, the sixth grade that were wearing theirs just past their ears. Mine was, after the cut, about a half an inch all over. Great start. Yeah, I was thinking... By the time school started, my hair will be a little longer than, like, like the Beatles. Oh. I love the Beatles. I, I was listening to them once on, I, I want to hold your hand by them once on, on, on my transistor radio, and my dad threw it out the window into the neighbor's yard and accidentally hit their dog in the head. <laughs> <clears throat> he hated the Beatles. The summer was going to be over in exactly two weeks, and I knew what I was going to wear that first day of school, right down to the, the socks and the underwear. <laughs> Three weeks before that haircut, my mom took me on a trip to, uh, to Montgomery Wards. Maybe just uh, take it up a little around the ears, son, he said, as he started to pull the sheet off. He kept, kept looking at me like he wasn't happy. Oh, really? This is fine. Well, I don't know. What about your folks? Uh, my mom was gone, and this is, the way, this is the way my dad told me to get it, so it's fine. All right, if it is, it is. $1.50, son. Shit, I flew out of that chair as if it were a fucking cannon. You know, I just, just wanted to get away from him. He seemed kind of weird and old, so I put my hands in my pockets to get the $2 of back-breaking money, and, and there's a hole in my pocket. I couldn't feel it anywhere. You know, all of them, every fucking pocket. I had two pairs of pants and I wore the ones with fucking holes. <laughs> you know, I searched every pocket five times. I, I searched every pocket like I was looking for heaven. You know, I was so scared. I, I started to shake. 
I wanted to see my mom. I wanted to see her face. I wanted to make her feel better. You know, the, the barber was making a noise in his throat like he was going to say something. When I, I felt something crammed up in the top of my front pocket. Man, I, I dug out $2 bills and I handed them to him. There you are. He was still looking at me weird, so I looked away while he gave me the 50 cents change. Thank you. I didn't want to run out of the store, but I walked as fast as I could. Son, what are all those bumps on your head? Things, uh, things all right at home that from a dog or something? A bear? <laughs> you know, I didn't want it to sound as dumb as it did. I, I wanted it to be funny. <laughs> things never come out of my mouth the way I want them to. When I was five years old, I, I sat on the skateboard. You know, I, I was on the board, my back to my father, and it was a pretty steep hill, so I only wanted a little push. You know, he promised he'd, he'd run around to the front to stop me if I went too fast. <laughs> he pushed harder than I thought. I was, I was flying. <laughs> okay, 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 stop now, Dad. Just hang on, you'll be all right. He said, man, I was, I was scared shitless, you know? The board started to like, Bounce from going so fast, I felt like I was in a Roadrunner cartoon. Okay, okay, stop now, Dad. Come on, you'll be all right. Don't be a baby, he said. Then he gave me another big push, and I went headfirst into a rose garden. Straight into the thorny, pretty flowers. My dad was laughing. I guess I could have looked pretty stupid. I had, I had blood on my face from where the thorns had cut my scalp. <laughs> I had seven holes in my head. When we got back from the hospital, my dad said that I, my head all bandaged up, looked like something out of a Tom and Jerry cartoon. He was right. That's a good looking haircut, son. You be careful. I hopped on my Stingray bike and headed to the liquor store across the street. You know, I was smart enough to keep the quarters bunched up in my sweaty fists so they wouldn't fall out of my dumb, holy pockets. I swore to myself I wasn't going to buy anything. Yeah, right. <laughs> I leaned my handlebars against the plate glass window and I, I just wanted to see what kind of candy I could get up to 50 cents for mine. You know, sometimes I'd go in there and stare at the candy. The bald man that runs the store looked up from his racing forums. He, he had seen me before when I buy cigarettes for my dad. He just nodded. Cigarettes. Oh. Fuck you guys, I am dying for a cigarette. You know, I've only had like 10 smokes since I've been in here. My aunt came in a couple of times and um, snuck me in a couple of smokes. You know, sometimes you have to like rip the waistline and the seam of your pants and cram the tobacco in there. And then, and then you could split a match in half so you can have two and you put that in your cuffs. And sometimes if you can sneak extra matches in, dudes will trade you tobacco for one. And then... Then he had to wait till like three in the morning to light up because the guards don't check the cell so often. I haven't decided if I'm gonna get high or not yet. I really want to. <laughs> I'd like to take some uppers and, and stay up all night and listen to the Abbey Road album about a hundred times. You know, it came out while I was in here, and that sucks. I've only heard one song from it, and it was over the phone. On, uh, on Christmas Eve, they let us make a phone call. I, I called my friend Tudor, and, and he played it. I walked straight to the candy shelf. <laughs> I picked up uh, a bit of honey, a big hunk. Some wax mini drinks, the largest jawbreaker. A pack of baseball cards, a Butterfinger, some nickel wafers, a, another bit of honey. They're so sweet, and um, and a Hershey bar. I eyed the sour grape and apple gumballs. I want them too. I want all of it. All of it except for the mint lifesavers. They suck. <laughs> I started to get this. This weird feeling inside of me with the idea of having all that candy, like, like I just had to have it or I'll die, you know? 
And I, I couldn't put all that stuff back. My arms wouldn't let me. Plus, plus I had already touched it, so I think I, I think I have to buy it, right? <laughs> Didn't want to kipe it. I mean, I could probably pay for most of it with the 50 cents, and then I could, I could tell my dad I gave the haircut man the $2, and he just never gave me any change back. Well, I had to tell him something. The jawbreaker was in my mouth. Oh, the thing was so big, I... I couldn't even close my mouth, but that didn't stop me. You know, I, I tore into the bit of honey as well. I, I, I tore recklessly at the meticulous little corner folds of wax paper that were around each individual slab of sweetness. I, uh, I wondered if people in a factory had made this by hand and, and felt bad for destroying what may have taken someone a long time to do, but that didn't stop me. I took the jawbreaker out and one by one put the whole bit of honey into my mouth. Damn. I chewed it like it was some kind of magic potion. You know, my jaw was like, like a nectar seeking machine. And, and then when the sweetness got smaller and smaller and there was nothing left but the, the tiny bit of sauce that used to be there, I wanted more. My tongue swept my mouth desperately trying to find some more flavor, but all it did was, was wipe out any traces of it. I put the jawbreaker in the pocket with the smallest hole. The stuff costs like a, a nickel a candy bar and a penny a gum. I made sure that every cent of the change got spent. You know, I thought that because there was no change to bring home, it'd simply mean that there was never any ever. I, I paid the man, he, he didn't say a word. I had to make one last stop before leaving though. <coughs> It was weird, like, like I was being called over by some, some weird force. It's a magazine stand. <laughs> just a peek, I thought, just a quick look. I grab a Playboy while pretending to look at the open Archie comics. You know, I put the Playboy in the, co in the Archie comic, but the thing was that the Playboy was much bigger and it probably looked real fucking stupid. <laughs> You know, I knew to open it in the middle. That's where the girls were. Sweet skin, sweet, sweet smiles. I turn the pages slowly and it says, I've, it's as if I was talking to each photo. Mom. Place where I, he's talking to, it's reaching out, you know, it wants me to touch it. I, I need someone to fix this feeling. It, it feels good, but I still want to cry for some goddamn reason. I, it was a Sunday afternoon. I was seven years old. I, I remember that um, a Hit the Road Jack song was playing on the radio in the kitchen. I sat in the tub, man, I was afraid to move. You know, mom sat across me with her back to the faucet and her titties. Um, my dad used to call them that. We're, uh, we're just under the water at the nipple. She made soft circular motions with her hands to distribute the warmth, and as she did, the water gently lifted her things in her. Is that all right for you, honey? Yeah, Mom. <laughs> you know, I, I moved my hands on the water in front of me as well, pretending to stir, but I was really just trying to hide my wiener. <laughs> you know, I felt really weird with her looking at my area. It was like, it was there like some baby chicken begging to be fed or something. <laughs> I felt the warm water creep around in my back and it felt good. I kept my hands cupped over my thing, but my eyes were like, hypnotized. I, I could only stare into her eyes. You know, this was new, but it seemed like it was always what I wanted. It wasn't her at my bedside telling me not to get so upset after she, after she, was, she was the reason my dad beat the crap out of me. You know, this, this time I had her all to myself.
nothing to get upset about yet. Hold me, mommy. I could get real small and hide in your place like a kangaroo, only underwater. She leaned to the sink across from the tub and I could see from her rear that the hair went all the way under. Wow. Wow. She slid back into the tub and just like that it disappeared again. I had a real clear picture though. Here, turn around honey, I, I wanna wash your back. And I turned around underwater as much as I could before standing up, even with my back to her. I, I held my hands in front of my stiff little bird. <laughs> The long strokes from the washcloth felt so good that every time she, she washed near my butt, my body would tingle. It felt good. Okay, you can sit down now. She gently pulled me into her V-shape while I still faced away. Man, I, I was stiff as a pencil and now the freedom of being able to like, open my legs made it feel even better. You know, I felt her softly rubbing the scars on my head. It was a different song. It was a sweet song. It's like, it's like every note was attached to my heart or something. And I felt like, like baby Jesus in the tub with Mother Mary. Okay, now lean forward and rinse your head. I did what she said like I was in a train. I leaned forward and rinsed my head. Okay, you can turn around now. She pulled the plug so the water could drain, and when it got low enough to see me, I stood up, but I didn't cover myself. We stood there naked. I came up to her titties, so that's where I stared for a long time, but I knew the other places on her body were real close. Tommy, do you think your mom's pretty? Then she draped a soft cotton towel over my shoulders. I, I had never talked to anyone with my thing hard before. <laughs> yeah, mom. I think. I thought my mom was the most beautiful woman in the world. Well, what do you like about me? And she was wrapping her towel around her the way women do. I, I like your hair, and you have a nice face. Uh, do you think my legs are pretty? Then she pulled her towel up her leg the way I'd see movie stars do and giggled. Oh, yeah, Mom, I think your legs are neat. <laughs> you know, I wanted her to pull it all the way up again so I could see her. That way I could be really sure that we were close. Instead, she just turned me around and held me close and dragged me everywhere, and that felt good. Just me, my mom, the towel, the sun through the window, I'd never felt warmth like that in my life. I see what you're doing over there, kid. You're not old enough for that. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Put the magazine back on the rack and I ran out of the store. You know, it sure felt strange to be stiff and ride my bike. Kept thinking fucking people in their cars would see it or it was gonna run into something. <laughs> I've got a boner. <laughs> I've got a boner. <laughs> That's what the kids called it anyway, a boner. I, uh, I was really excited about my new haircut. You know, I, I love the wind in my face. I, I was standing upright, pedaling as fast as I could. I had the bag of candy in between my teeth. I, uh, I was pedaling and all of a sudden, I, the street seemed to rise up and, um, and make pedaling harder. You know, I stood up and I pedaled even faster, but I still got the feeling like, like, like I was gonna fall back and then I could see my house, you know, it, but it was still so far away, like, like I wasn't going anywhere. And then, and then I saw what looked like my mom come out of the house, and she stopped, and she said something. And then she got in the car, and there was a little kid in the front seat. And, and she had the same clothes she had on when she took me shopping for school clothes earlier. <laughs> she already took me shopping. Who's... Where's she going? 
Who's with her? When she got in the car, she was she was breathing heavy, like like she was mad or something. But but all I could think about was new pens, pencils, erasers, notebooks, folders, plastic pen holders I was gonna get. New, <laughs> new tools. New chances. Maybe maybe the new tools would have the right answers this year. She drove pretty fast and I, I was hoping it was because she was as excited as I was. Uh, when we got to Montgomery Wards, she told me only to get what I needed because there was no money. <laughs> I tested that idea with a couple of markers in my favor and I swore colored punchels were a must. But whether they were or not, she treated me. And we were on the way to the nightgown section and um, she stopped and, and she pulled one out of the rack and she held it up to her and she smiled at me and she pretended like she was sleeping in it. And she pulled another one off the rack. This one was blue and um, she held the material up to her face and she smelled it. That's my favorite, Mom. <laughs> you, think, you think your mom looks pretty in this? Yeah. You look good in it. You should get it. Dad won't care if you buy it. <laughs> You're my little man. Maybe I should try it on for you. Yeah? She just kind of stood there for a second. And I just stared at her and she just held the nightgown in her hands and then and it looked like, like she was melting. Like the Wicked Witch of the West. I started to not feel anything. I couldn't even talk. She just dropped the nightgown and, and fell to the floor with her head in her hands and just cried, like I do sometimes. People were watching, you know. A sales guy came over to see if everything was okay, but. It was like frozen time. You know, nothing seemed to breathe in that minute. We were helped to the register and um, we didn't say anything outside or on the way home. And when we got home, I, I looked and smelled at all my new things and then I put them under my bed. And later that afternoon, I was out in the, uh, the backyard playing with my army men. <laughs> These little fucking green guys that didn't do anything. Yeah, they were molded in different positions, but they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't say things about like climbing hills and attacking the bad war guys. You know, I didn't even know which sides were fighting who, and I didn't care. It's a stupid game. So, so what I'd do is I'd stage them up like they'd uh, all just had a giant battle. And then I'd mash them up by jumping up and down on them like they just got bombed by Godzilla or something. <laughs> So boring. I went over to the house to check on my mom. Lots of laundry piled around the living room, you know. Lots of my dad's overalls waiting its turn. My mom sat at the kitchen table, a bottle of her medicine in front of her, was smoking a cigarette. She looked so fucking sad. Her head was like hanging down. You know, the washing machine started to click and, and, and spin, and I could hear it starting to get really loud, and I was worried about it waking my dad up. You know, he'd get, he'd get really pissed off if he woke up too soon. Usually, Mom jumped up and turned it off before, but, but not today. Um, it, it pounded the floor and the wall, and, and she just stared at it like, like she would follow it if it broke free. You know, it bounced up and down and back and forth and made the loudest noise that I'd ever heard from it. My mom just sat with a cigarette in her mouth like she didn't care about nothing. You know, I thought things could change now for the better. Like, like I don't know, I could have wafer cookies or something. You know, I knew Dad heard that racket and I didn't want to be anywhere near the house when he came storming out. So, so I ran out the back door into the backyard again. Click! The washer made a loud jolt like, like a train... Locking in with another car and then... Nothing. Silence. I 
kept wondering who shut the machine off. You know, I, I didn't see anybody in the living room, so after, after a minute, I tiptoed into the den. Mom? I thought maybe she was in my room. You know, I hated when she went snooping around in there, like, like when she... Like when she finds gross underwear by looking in the trash or when she finds out I went to bed by looking under the covers. You know, I was worried, not about her going through my stuff, but, but where she went to so fast. I didn't want to be anywhere near the house when my dad came out, so, so I ran out the back door into the backyard again. You know, I went over by the trash cans, started clanging the lids around and stuff. And my dad coming from the back door, so I... So I clanged the lid one more time and I hoped he would hear it. What the hell were you doing? I was taking out the trash, Dad. From where? This goddamn trash is overflowing. He pointed to a corner of the kitchen where the trash is full. From my room. From your room. I was cleaning my room. You were cleaning your room. Yeah. Can I check it? Yeah. If your room's dirty, you go to bed for a week. Okay. I just kind of stood there for a second. You know, I made sure I was far enough away to not be able to get hit, and I was trying to think of ways to stop him from going into my room. You want me to make you some coffee, Dad? No, I'll do it. What the hell was all that noise? <clears throat> I don't know. Where's your mother? Uh, maybe next door? I was in the backyard. Just. Go to your room for now. You know, I was glad I didn't get whacked, but I felt like something was going on. I, sometimes, sometimes I get excited about new things happening. So usually it'd be about like new stuff, but sometimes I, sometimes I'd even like it when mom and dad fought. I'm not sure why really, but maybe, maybe if things got really bad, they would change. Bert. Tommy has been acting up all morning. He's sassy and won't clean his room. I'm not feeling well. I need some help around here. God damn it, Eva. You have to start on me as soon as I walk through the fucking door. I work all night. You need help. With what? Here's your goddamn help. Come here, Tommy. Come on, Dad. I didn't do anything. I said, get the hell over here now. I promise I won't do it again. I said, get the hell over here now! You know, I could tell when he was really going to lose it, so I, so I ran. I'd never run from him before. I, uh, I ran into my room and I hid under the bed in the corner and I used the vacuum that was there as a shield until he got a hold of it and he started jabbing me with the pipe to get me out. Peed all over the floor and finally crawled out and he started slapping me. Here, Eva, I'm helping out, happy. Pushed me to the floor. You stay in your bed for a week. Oh, you're a big man, Bert. You can beat up your boy. You're asking for it, Eva. Don't. What are you gonna do? Hit me again? You're a coward, Bert. You couldn't even make it in the army. That's enough! Chairs and other things went flying around the kitchen. You know, he slammed the back door and left. Does that whore of yours know you hit women? Have you hit her yet, you bastard? That's when she would come in my room and ask me why I couldn't be good and listen to her. I don't know why it couldn't be good. Man, they sure take their sweet fucking time letting you out of here, don't they? <laughs> Hello? All they have to do is open the fucking door. Anyone know what's going on? Bet they won't even answer me. Hello! Please tell me what the fuck is going on! Yeah. Fuck you! <laughs> I kept wondering where my mom went to. I'm sorry, Mom. I won't do it again. I promise. Whatever. Just... Just please come back.
You know, all I could think was, I hope I had said the right things at the store earlier. I fell asleep on the floor, and, and my dad woke me up. Get up. Get up. I have to work. When you see your mother, you, you tell her to pack her things and get the hell out. I don't want her here in the morning. You hear me? Yeah, I did. What the fuck? What the fuck time is it? Hey, it's my fucking day to get out. You motherfuckers can't keep me here. I've done my time. Fuck. Please. Let me the fuck out of here. I promise I will do what the fuck I'm supposed to when I get out. You know? I'm sick of these fucking places. I I'm gonna find some nice fucking people to live with, you know? <laughs> you know, there are guys in here that have actually killed someone. <sighs> when I get asked by a lot of the dudes what I'm in here for, I always say like, like, like drug dealing or, or running, or I can't say running away and taking pills. It sounds wussy, you know? I have to seem like a badass. Fuck, man, they gotta do something with me soon. It's gotta be near fucking like, fuck, man. I remembered a, a prayer my mom told me to say when things were lost. Dear St. Anthony, dear St. Anthony, please come around. My, my mom is lost and can't be found. All you had to do was insert whatever was lost where the word mom was, and you ended up finding it. And it, it had worked before when I lost my baseball mitt, so I said it constantly. <laughs> and I went into the kitchen to look for something to eat for dinner, but there were no leftovers in the refrigerator. So I remembered a, a walk-in freezer in the garage. I remembered how my mom did with the frozen stuff. You know, she let the water run over it until it got thaw. I could do that. I could do that. It was real dark outside, so. so I turned the driveway light on all the time, praying. I checked the big garage door, still praying, locked. I went around, checked the side walk-in door. The outside padlock was off, but it was locked from the inside. So I went around to check the window, praying and praying, and it was not locked. Thank you, St. Anthony. This time, I tried to make myself laugh, and I said hamburger in the prayer instead of my mom. Dear St. Anthony, dear St. Anthony, please come around. My hamburger's lost and can't be found. I didn't crack myself up, even though sometimes I can, I can really make myself laugh. You know, I pried open the window, and there she was. Hovering like an like an angel. She'll make me dinner. <laughs> it was real dark. And it looked like, like she was floating, like her shoulders were hunched forward. She looked like something out of Mary Poppins or something. I thought I was seeing shit. <laughs> you know, I was so happy. There she was. Mom, mom, what are you doing? Look, and I started to get real lightheaded the way you do if you take too many uppers or, or if you stand up too fast. And I wanted to, I started to see stars in my head, so I wanted to get in before I passed out. So I kind of, kind of like flew in and um, I landed on my face, square on my nose. It hurt really bad. Really bad. I just laid on the ground for a second, and I saw uh, a ladder on the ground a few feet from me. I crawled over where my mom was, and I reached up, and I touched her foot, and I kept saying, Mom, 
Mm, I don't feel good. <laughs> The cord was rubbing across the beam from the sway of her body and it confused the fuck out of me because I didn't know what she was doing yet. I thought she was moving. So, so I held her legs to still her, you know? I sat up and my shoulders were even with her ankles and I thought, I thought I could put her feet on my shoulder and help her get down. But <laughs> but I knew, I knew she was really dead. You know, that's the word they use when people's bodies stopped. And then, and then you either went to heaven or hell, depending on the sins you'd committed. Mom said Marilyn Monroe went to hell because you were not allowed to kill yourself. You know, there's this girl I was kind of going steady with after I, after I overdosed, I don't think she's my girlfriend anymore. She stopped, she stopped returning my dumb letters after two months, you know. My first girlfriend was Tudor's cousin. You know, we kissed, and I, I didn't even think we did other stuff. I just, I can't be sure we did it right. <laughs> you know, we would hang out in the city, or, or, or days when the city was washed with rain, we'd, we'd We'd go and sit on top of Eagle Rock and we'd stop telling dumb, dirty jokes and, 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 and making up our own words to songs. And, and, and we'd watch the world get close. You know, that's what it felt like. Like, you could touch anything out there. You know, the clouds look like... <laughs> like sanitary magic carpets. My mom used the word sanitary a lot. Like if I'd eaten something I dropped on the ground. Or... <laughs> At night, uh, Tudor's cousin and I would sleep on the floor real close together like animals and we'd be real friendly and we'd touch each other everywhere. Now I hope Denise still likes me when I get out. I couldn't help but think of my mom burning in hell. You know, the image in my head was of flames all over her body while, well, well, she screamed in terror and agony forever. You know, that's what they taught us in catechism. I thought I could save her. Fuck the devil. The idea of, of having, her, having her all to myself made me feel weird. I kept thinking about her area from the tub. You know, I looked up, but it was too dark to see anything. I thought if I stood up, I could, I could touch her there. And then maybe she'd, she'd feel it in hell and she was no, she'd know it was me and she'd wake up. I stood up and I touched her inner leg and I was shaking. I, I kept saying, Mom, Mom. Mom. So she would know it was me and she'd wake up. She'd feel it in hell and she'd wake up. And then I got real scared in case God was watching, and he probably was because he sees everything, right? He sees everything. I let go of her. Even though I wanted to hold on so tight that no one could ever pull me away from her. Please, God. No more dirty stuff. I just... I just want her back. I just want her back. <laughs> yeah, I must have fell asleep or something. Or maybe, maybe God put me to sleep for some reason. But that was the last time I ever saw her. Later when I woke up, 
I remember a lot of lights and voices and I remember I remember being carried out of the garage by someone and that person saying, this boy's soaking, he must have wet himself. And, and I remember a voice that sounded like my dad and he sounded nice. I mean, like he wasn't mad. <laughs> and I remember being carried out. I remember spending the night in the hospital and some nurses giving me pills. And That day when I was coming back from the haircut and I saw my mom, I did. I don't know, I, just, I saw her, I really think I did. And I just started screaming, you know, mom, 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 mom. I started screaming so loud that my bike started to lose balance and I flew off, you know, and I finally landed. I could feel the pavement peel back the flesh on my elbow and my knee. <laughs> When I got up, I was crying and bleeding all over the fucking place. The car was gone. Kept the bag of candy in my teeth, though. And I walked my bike up to the back of my house. And I put my candy behind a rock, and I walked in through the back door, and my dad was sitting at the kitchen table waiting for me. Thought I told you to go get a haircut. I did, Dad. That's not a haircut. Go back and do it. Wait a minute. It's all that blood. <laughs> Nothing. I just fell off my bike. Come here. I said, get over here. <laughs> I put my hands up high to deflect any punches. You know, I could. I knew when I could see the nicotine stains on his middle or pointing fingers or, or the whiskers on his chin that I'm close enough to get hit. What the hell's wrong with you? You a deaf mute? I said, get your ass over here. I raised my hands up high to deflect any punches and I moved closer. Uh, it's only scratches, you'll be fine now. Stop crying. <laughs> Man, I couldn't stop. Tommy, I can't do anything unless I know what's wrong. Stop crying and tell me what's wrong. You know, for some reason, this just made me cry even harder. I think, like, like I felt close to something I could never have. All right, enough already. Punched me across the face, and I went down. I stopped crying, though. Now get up, and go get your goddamn haircut, and don't come back until it's done right. You know, I took off on my bike and headed up towards the barber's. What the fuck was I supposed to say to him now? I didn't want him looking at me again. I didn't want anyone looking at me ever. I rode my bike past the barber shop and I saw him standing in the doorway. I thought that man knows everything about my stinky little life. He doesn't want me to come into his shop. <laughs> I remembered some kids at the high school talking about a mountain. They said it has a, a pool and a waterfall and that people swim up there naked under the moonlight sometimes even. I rode my bike up further than I ever had before, all the way up Pacific Avenue to where the, the trail started. You know, I, I put my bike behind some bushes and I started up a path. I didn't know where I was going. I just wanted to be with different people. You know, I thought of dying, and 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 even though it scared the shit out of me, I wasn't afraid of it. If that makes sense, you know. I even thought of doing it myself. I just didn't know how. I could have, though. I could have gone to the beach and just walk out so far that I couldn't stand up anymore. Just float out to sea. I didn't know how to get to the beach, though. <laughs> Man. Now I really want to go to the beach. I fell asleep in some grass, and um, I woke up in the middle of the night to coyotes howling. I, I fell back asleep. When I woke up the next morning, there were, there were three coyotes nuzzling my leg. I rolled over really fast to get away, and I felt my leg was all wet and sticky. They were licking the jawbreaker in my pocket. <laughs> they stayed very near and, and didn't move a muscle, and I stared at them. And I, I tried to talk to them through my eyes, you know. 
tried to tell him to come closer and th that I wouldn't hurt him and that I wanted to hug him. They didn't, but, you know, I know they understood something because they stared straight in my eyes. They just kind of walked away after that. I went home. And my dad was asleep on the couch. He didn't say anything to me when he woke up. I went back to talk to the coyotes again, but they didn't show up. My dad said I couldn't live with him anymore, and that's how I ended up with my aunt. You know, but things are going to be different, because pretty soon if I get busted, I'll have to go to county jail. And I hear there's booty busting and all kinds of shit in county jail. You know? I heard about it happening here, but there's just lots of, lots of whistling and shit in the showers. You know? Lots of fights, though. But, uh, but things are going to be different. I, I will listen, Mom, wherever you are. You know, the, the first thing I'm going to do when I get out of here is like, it's like, thank God and kiss the ground or something. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll probably have a cigarette first, like I said. <laughs> and then do all that other stuff. Hey, what the fuck time is it?